there, it's Christy with the Chirp YouTube channel. My videos on echolalia have been some of the most viewed and most commented on videos that I have done for this channel. So I know that this is a topic that's very interesting to my viewers. Today I would like to talk about some of the reasons why people do echolalia, why they demonstrate this really unique trait. It's not just people who have diagnoses of autism who practice echolalia. Some other people use this as a strategy as well. And there are a multitude of reasons why this practice can soothe or regulate or serve a purpose. The first time I got introduced to echolalia having a purpose was at a lecture given by Barry Prezant. I'll put links to him down below. He's fantastic. He does lots of research and he has developed some wonderful models for working with people who are on the autism spectrum. I very much respect him and I will link to his work below as well as to some articles that talk about this specific topic. His most interesting work to me was about the purposes of echolalia and the fact that Echolalia isn't just a useless thing that we need to eliminate. It is a communication style that we need to learn to understand. Once we realize the reasons behind the echolalia, then we can step in and offer more useful strategies that will be more functional to the person. Today, I'm just going to talk about immediate echolalia. This is repeating something immediately after someone else says it. Immediate echolalia itself can be divided into two separate categories. The first one is interactive. The second is personal or non-interactive. The first type of interactive immediate echolalia, this is becoming difficult to say, is turn-taking. This is where, let's say a child knows that a conversation is supposed to go back and forth but she doesn't know quite how to carry on a conversation yet, so she just repeats what you just said. So I might say, hi Sally, how are you? And she might say, hi Sally, how are you? She knows she's supposed to answer something, she's just not sure what it is yet. That makes sense. In this case, it's very easy to use as if speaking, which is turning it, turning my sentence around so that it's appropriate if it came up from the child's mouth. So instead of greeting Sally with, hi Sally, how are you? I might say, hi Miss Christie, and then she will repeat, hi Miss Christie. So she's learning an appropriate response. You might also choose to have a visual board of different options of things that Sally could say to me when she sees me for the first time. Then she has some options. She doesn't just have to repeat what I say, she can pick her own comment. The second type of interactive, immediate echolalia is declarative. This is where a person simply wishes to declare that something is so, and so repeats some, what someone else said, kind of like saying, yep, it's kind of like that. So I might say, I like blue, and this person might say, I like blue, looking around at my house where things are blue. In this case, we can help the child to perhaps expand by saying something that adds to the statement that I said. So if I like blue and I say, I like blue, perhaps I could prompt the child to ask me a question about it. Why do you like blue? Or to look around and say, I see blue things in this room. We might encourage that child to expand upon what someone else says rather than just repeating it. The third type of interactive immediate echolalia is a yes answer. A lot of our students who have communication delays learn the word no quite quickly in life, but they don't very easily learn the word yes. Instead, a lot of them will simply repeat what you said to mean yes. So for example, if I say, Abraham, would you like an apple? Instead of saying yes, he might say, Abraham, would you like an apple? 
And that to him means yes. He just told me what he thinks I wanted to hear. In this case, it's very useful to use communication books and please use visuals in all of these cases. If our kids are demonstrating echolalia, it means they need some visual support. They need a better way to structure language in their heads and visual support is the best way to do that. You might have a communication book that says, I want, and then a little space, and then please at the end. And, or you may just use a card. You may just have one picture of an apple and you may just hold up the board. Once again, in this case, we want to speak as if we are the child so that the child can get all of the words in a way that is appropriate for him to speak. So I might say, I want an apple, please. If he is very early in his communication development, I might just say apple and give him an apple if he repeats the word apple. If he's not verbal at all, then of course I'm not gonna expect him to repeat the word apple yet, but maybe I expect him to hand me the picture of the apple with or without support, whatever he can accomplish. Please do take a peek at the video series that I have on using communication books. I think that would be very helpful to you. I will also put links to a video that I did on how to help students answer yes or no questions when they have difficulty with that. Because obviously, if a child is doing echolalia, instead of answering yes to a yes or no question, we need to work on it. And so that video should help you with that. The fourth type of interactive immediate echolalia is request. Sometimes a child will simply repeat what you have said in order to ask for something, even if it wasn't a yes or no question. You might say, I'm gonna get some water. And the child might say, I'm gonna get some water, meaning I would like some water too. If you think your child is using echolalia to communicate a request, then please, once again, use a visual communication book. It will make a world of difference. The other type of immediate echolalia is personal or non-interactive echolalia. This is echolalia that serves a purpose within the child rather than between people. The first type of non-interactive immediate echolalia is non-focused. This typically happens when a child is very highly agitated. Sometimes in the literature this is called highly aroused and it means the child is worried or anxious, maybe excited, and he keeps repeating what other people are saying. Not necessarily as a self-soothing mechanism, but just because he's upset and he may say it with vigor, he may say it under his breath, but it is a sign that all is not well in his world. If you think that this is happening with your child or your student, then the best way to manage it is by introducing some calming strategies. I have lots of videos about calming strategies and sensory inputs, and I will put one up here that should be helpful to you. The second type of non-interactive immediate echolalia is rehearsal. This might happen in a situation in which the child is given a direction, like hand out these papers to your friends. And he might say, hand out these papers to your friends, hand out these papers to your friends. And that may be helping him remember what he was doing so that he can do it. In this case, we don't want to remove that support strategy. We might want to make it less obtrusive. If it's really loud, we might want to mention, maybe you could repeat that under your breath. Maybe you could whisper it. Maybe you could just say it in your head. I know it's helping you remember what you're doing, but everybody else doesn't need to hear it. So let's practice making it a little quieter. Things like that can help in this case. The third and last type of non-interactive immediate echolalia is self-regulatory. This is where a child is upset, over aroused, feeling anxious, and repeats what other people are saying in order to calm down. It differs from the other types of self-focused echolalia because it is for the specific purpose of calming down. And that's what makes it a different category all on its own. So if your child is feeling anxious 
and walks around repeating what everyone says, this is a self-soothing mechanism. And once again, we want to introduce other strategies that can help the child feel calm. If we think it's a sensory issue, then we need to address the sensory issue. We can give the child some strategies to follow, like deep breaths and squeezing hands and rubbing legs that can become repetitive and rote behaviors that might be more helpful than repeating other people's words. Although I do have someone in my family who demonstrates echolalia. He is a typical adult, did not receive any diagnoses, but when he is feeling stressed, he tends to repeat the last thing that someone else said in kind of a, I'm thinking it to myself kind of way. If I say, dinner was really good, he might say, dinner was really good. It doesn't seem to serve a purpose, but I've noticed that he only does this when he is pretty stressed out, when things are making him feel a little anxious. So I think that it might be a self-soothing mechanism that he doesn't yet realize. Very interesting. It's a very interesting topic. Please do a little more reading on it if this is a topic that interests you. Once again, the info box will be full of fun little tidbits for you. Dive deep into all the information you can if this is an issue that is a big one in your life because echolalia serves purposes and we can look at what our children or students are doing communicatively and help them reach the next level by offering them better tools that are gonna help them be more functional and that are gonna help them be better communicators. I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.